الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد continuing on in our study of the chapter in kitab al-fada'il in imam al-nawawi's riyad al-salihin the chapter 193 bab al-amr bi muhafadati ala salawat al-maktubat والناهي الأكيد والوعيد الشديد في تركهن. The strict orders for observance of obligatory salat. And we already mentioned in the first dars some of the fawaid from the uh, from the the verses of the Quran, which refer us to the importance of observing the obligatory salat. And that salat is your wasila or your means between your wasail, between you and your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So strive your best to perfect your salat. Imam al Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned the hadith Wa'an ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, buni al Islam ala khams, shahadati in la ilaha illallah. وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَإِكَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ وَحَجِّ الْبَيْتِ وَصَوْمَ رَمَضَانِ وَصَوْمِ رَمَضَانِ مُتَفَقُّنْ عَلَيْهِ In this hadith which is in Bukhari and Muslim, the hadith which makes clear, that clarifies for us the pillars of Islam. And it verifies for us that what? That salat is a pillar of Islam. It's the second pillar of Islam and the most important pillar after the shahadatain, and the shahadatain has its alaqa or has its relationship with what? With aqidah, with creed. So in this hadith, Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he reported the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Islam is based on five pillars, testifying that there is no God, no true God worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger, performing salat, the payment of zakat, the Hajj to the sacred house and fasting the holy month of Ramadan. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. And there are immense fawaid from this hadith. But Imam Anawi uh, listed this hadith to show us that the importance of that obligatory salat, that it's so important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated and made it the second pillar of Islam. So that's the shahid in the importance of that hadith. Moving on to the next hadith. وَعَنْهُ قَالْ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أُقَاتَلَ النَّاسَ حَتَّى يَشْهَدُوا أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُؤْتُ الزَّكَاةِ فَإِذَا فَعَلُوا ذَلِكَ عَصَمُوا مِنِّي the second hadith in the bab is a hadith also of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma who said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said I have been commanded to fight against the people till they testify to the shahada la ilaha illallah and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. And to establish the salat and pay the zakat, and if they do this, then their blood and property are secured, except by the rights of Islam, and their accountability is left to Allah. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith, again, it illustrates us, illustrates for us those important pillars of Islam. And that part of the sanctity of the, Mus of the Muslim is, of course, it has to do with his prayer. It's, it's, it's taking the shahada and entering the fold of Islam and establishing the prayer and maintaining and doing the acts of Islam that Islam has ordered us to do on the tongue of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this hadith illustrates for us not only the importance of that pillar, the Salat and establishing the Salat and that protects us, that gives us that sanctity. It also 
lets us know, or we also derive from this hadith, that once we enter the fold of Islam, that sanctity is protected and that a person doesn't leave that sanctity unless they do that which is negates their Islam from the nawaqid of Islam, those things which negate a person's Islam. So otherwise, Ahl Sunnah says that when a person is uh, their zahir, you know, their, their apparent appearance is that of a Muslim, then we say they're a Muslim. Meaning that we, we, we know that this person is from the community and, and so forth, but we don't allow suspicion to try to take somebody outside the fold of Islam and make takfir on people. And this is a very important principle and an important part of our usul or our foundation in understanding the religion because this is where Ahl Sunnah differs with Ahl Bidah with regards to this. As we've seen recently, uh, one of the Jamaat al has spent time making takfir of me. Making takfir based on what? On their suspicion making inferences and claims that I make take fear of them or this or that or what have you. So they base their whole a soul in fact and their whole religion based on suavan, based on uh, a wicked perception. And this is a trait of Ahl Bid'ah from the past. The people of Ahwa will, will, uh, and uh, uh, Bid'ah that they have, they take the principles of Ahl Sunnah and they twist them. So here, for things that are not even kufr, they make takfir. And this is also a pillar of Hezbiyah, of, of the the foundations of Hizbiya, and that the most extreme of the Hizbis will make takfir of those people who disagree with them. It doesn't matter if they've done an act of kufr or not, and it doesn't matter to them whether the conditions of takfir and the duwada to takfir or shuru to takfir are in place or not, but instead they just make takfir because you differ, because you're not in accordance with their hawa. This is a pillar of the Hizbi groups and the individuals and ideologues of Hezbiya. Because you'll find those people, those are the most extreme ones, is they make takfir. Those who are less than that, they'll make tibdi. They'll say that, oh, you don't agree with me, you're uh, a mubtidiya. Oh, we saw you uh, quote from Sheikh so-and-so, you must be a mubtidiya. You must be helping him in bid'ah, so you're a mubtidiya and they make hajr from you. So these are also traits of Hizbiyyah that we have to be aware of. Back to the importance of this hadith that the salat and paying the zakat and the shahada and all of the pillars of Islam that that makes the Muslim what makes the Muslim sacred and makes and establishes the brotherhood uh, between the believers. And that in the last part of the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Asamu, uh, Asamu minni dima'um wa amwalahum illa bi haq al-Islam wa hisabuhum al Allah. That then their blood and property are secured except by the rights of Islam and their accountability is left to Allah. What is meant here by the uh, their blood and property are secured except by the rights of Islam, meaning that there are sins Islam in Islam that uh, the punishment is related to capital punishment. For example, the adulterer that has been married, or uh, in Qasas, when someone is killed, taken another life unlawfully, then their life uh, will be taken. So those are some of the circumstances that uh, this relates to capital punishment and within the, but at the same time those individuals still remain in the fold of Islam. Moving on to the next hadith, which is a long hadith but also which illustrates for us the importance of 
the uh, the virtue of uh, establishing the obligatory prayer. I think we'll save that for the next sitting because it is a long hadith. A hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith of Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And so we'll keep that for the next sitting and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.